Welcome back. I uh, had a great half-time chat, uh, as ever. I hope to reproduce some of it here. Uh, one tweet that I must relay from you, and he seems to get a tweet on the show every week, uh, from the Sheffield FC uh, manager, Jazz Colliver, who said, uh, I wonder if Toddy manages to mention playing for Manchester United. <laughs> Well, he hasn't so far. No. But during the break, that's all we've heard, isn't it? About Manchester United. <laughs> but during the break, Don't we've want to just bore heard. The again. <laughs> <laughs> we've heard about Brian Robson and Manchester United training sessions that were real learning curves for young footballers. I don't know how much of what you said in the break you can repeat on air, but uh... all I can say, Alan, is that when you've got Whiteside Moses and Robson two footing you because the silly Scottish apprentice is called a nutmegs. <laughs> um, Paul Harvey, I'll name him. Um, he, right. played in the, he played in the Scottish Cup final. He was stupid Paul. enough to not make Urgent, those goals. Yeah, and call it. So we spent right. that, all that Friday morning jumping out of two foot tackles. Yeah, right. As you'd expect. Cheers, Jas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you seem to you learned you learned an awful lot from that. You, you were, do you indeed, were mate. Us. Best learning session we had, I think. Uh, yeah. We're under Eric, so yeah. And, and, and Leeds United have had a few hard men over the years, including yourself, uh, let it be said. Uh, but before you, they're the most notorious hard men, John, weren't they, at uh, Leeds United? There were one or two? Yeah, there were a few, uh, a few tough lads up there, weren't there? Um, David Batty was, was one of them. Yes. We heard about that during the ad break. Was it was he like that all the way through? <laughs> was he like that from being a young, young lad, you were saying? Or was yeah, he, yeah, he wasn't... He wasn't um, he wasn't dirty or hard because he, you know, he felt he needed to be. That that was just that, that, that was, that was him. him. And, and to this day, you know, I mean, we've had a we've had a, an invite to the 25 year anniversary and this, that, and the other, and everybody's going except Bats. He, he's just not interested no, in. He no, was only interested in just rides his motorbike. Yeah, he, 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 he wouldn't watch. Pump, not bother about. Not so bother about watching yeah, football. Yeah, you don't see him much now, do you? No. At all. No, no, he's he's just, um, Nobody knows. But wasn't there a rumor yeah. that he wouldn't take part in training on a Friday because he was liable to crock? When he, yeah, when he was uh, apparently when he was in the youth team and he, he, he wasn't allowed to train against the first team on a Friday because there'd, there'd be half a dozen of them carrying knots on the Saturday at three o'clock. <laughs> This is real. This is real football, folks. It really, it is, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's not quite the same now. Although Chris Wilder does insist on having proper full-out matches in training, doesn't he, dur during the week? Intense. It has to yeah. be intense. It has to be real. It has to be. It has to have some meaning. Um, people can make good decisions about how to combat that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Obviously. So, uh, yeah, he's working with the uh, with the team there, and and it's it's sure it's, it's producing results. So. We're not going to change, I hope. No. Yeah. Well, just yeah. before we go to James for a roundup of the, the sporting scene, uh, you're on duty for BBC Radio Sheffield, I think, John. Tomorrow, tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow night, Friday night, Sheffield Wednesday for Birmingham. Yeah. I'm there as well. Um, thoughts on that? You know, I was I was quite relieved on behalf of Sheffield Wednesday when Gianfranco Zola actually got the monkey off his back and yeah. got that first win at the 11th attempt as Birmingham manager because that was a sod's law just waiting for the Owls I thought if, if he hadn't got yeah that. absolutely um, yeah. but you know the confidence has got to be really really low at that club you no know, mm. even though they got you know got a result one nil win against know, Fulham, Fulham, yeah. Fulham yeah which is a good result really because Fulham have been doing well but yeah. but you know and that's why we go back to starting well and getting out them and you know really first 15 20 minutes going and hitting them with pace and power and and tempo and mm. and so the this you know the thing you look at that clock and think it's going to be a long night tonight yeah i think wednesday need that sort of performance as well just to lift that mood I do. Well, yeah. which is a little bit sort of reserved and you know waiting for the team yeah. and and why aren't, why aren't the team going at yeah, it like yeah. that i think they need that sort of rousing performance absolutely just to reset the mood absolutely because otherwise there's very little wrong that can't yeah. be put right i think mm. Um, right, uh, some fantastic games coming up for Blades. My goodness, there is. Yeah. So all the big ones are almost sandwiched together. Yeah, talking of good yeah. starts. I mean, that's what the Blades did last week, wasn't it? We were both there. We yeah. sat, you know, sat yeah. next to you. I had the pleasure of your company last week. You're Wimbledon. welcome, mate. That's so what they did, and we said that we thought, right, we had Wimbledon, all right, mid-table side, not the best of teams, but and they, they we got that early goal, which yeah. was a nothing goal really from nowhere, and then it a bit changed lucky, the whole it? feeling yeah. of the game, didn't it? Because yeah. then they couldn't sit back, and that was, you know, is that something? You know that you'd expect to see in, in you know in, in future weeks them trying to. I mean, I know that you don't not try and score do you, in the first sort of 20 minutes, but probably try and get that early goal. Yeah. And then it changed, puts yeah. the opposition on the back foot. It's how it? we set. It's how we've we've played the whole season, haven't we? We've been offensive. Mm. Um, we've got some great momentum now. Got good. It's got more attacking options than we've ever had. Mm. With the with the great recruitment January and Donna, we did a business early. 
So we've got James up there, we've got Billy's on nearly 20 goals, and we've got great guys to come off the bench. There's, the competition for the bench now is, is, is strong. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, why would we want to sit back? The top of the league, great confidence, good momentum. I, I, I think, like I say, without um, sounding too <laughs> overconfident, <laughs> yeah. it's exactly how we set up yeah. to play. I, I like the fact he didn't team. change the 3-5-2. He, 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 kept he with stuck it. with it, didn't he? He did. I, I think it suits yeah. us. It suits Kieran Freeman. Yeah. It suits Lafferty. Um, you've got Coach just protecting if he needs to. Those those yeah. those back three. You've got Jake Wright's come back. A, a great effect again. Ooh, Jake Wright. There's a topic. For yes. The, there's a yeah. topic for this half. Mr. Unbeaten. Yes. Sixteen appearances, no defeats. Yeah. Fantastic. A quiet man, but a yes. very effective man. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. What else is going on? Well, we're going to say the Blades against Peterborough. Um, uh, this weekend after a week and last week couldn't really go much better could it uh, Bolton drew Scunthorpe lost leave the Blades top of the table um, heading into this week obviously they beat Wimbledon 4-0 last weekend Wednesday are they the new Leeds by the way they seem to be on TV every week at the moment uh, play against Birmingham um, on the tellies yeah. we've already touched on Sky tomorrow night uh, good win last week against Wigan also on TV um, in sixth place in the championship look at non-league Alan I know that Alan uh, was up at Sandygate yesterday, mm. uh, watching Hallam FC grinding out a 1-0 win over Dronfield, bit of a local derby. Uh, they're yeah. still in the playoff positions. Couple of games in hand as well. Come on, what was it like then, that match? It was a decent game, yeah. actually. It was a bit of a glue pot pitch. It was difficult conditions. Uh, you, you've got the slope already there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was, a, it was a good game, and Dr Dronfield Town really, really ran them yeah. uh, quite close. And the ultras uh, singing? The ultras were singing. Uh, I could, <laughs> you know, I mean, you need cotton wool if you go to Hallam, because most of the songs are about the manager. Oh, no. Yeah, so you, you do need you it. Insist upon it. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a script he's written, and most of the time he's having to hold his hand up to wave to them like this. But yeah, they kept going. Not like that. Oh. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> that All right, no. Um, and eventually, ten minutes or so from time, nice headed goal from across from. Is it Mike uh, Bishop? Mike yeah, Bishop. Mike Bishop. Good Mike Bishop. player. Yeah, he's yeah, a good yeah. player. Chips with a few goals as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Blythe looked a little bit. He's been out for a while. Yeah. He looked a lucky. 35 a goal a season man. Yeah. Well, he was last season anyway. So. Yeah. All the other songs were about him. You're right. Blythe. But he just lacks a little bit of sharpness yet. Well, they're playing they against uh, pl fellow uh, promotion chases, Yorkshire Amateur on Saturday up in Leeds. Uh, Sheffield FC, uh, they lost against Rushton Diamonds last weekend. They keep winning a couple and they're losing a couple. It's a bit up and down at the minute. Mid-table they are um, in their league, the Evo Stick League. Uh, the Sheffield FC ladies, uh, season opener for them in the FA Cup. It was last Sunday against Charlton. Uh, won 2-0 comfortably. Debuts for Kennedy Owen um, and a couple of the other younger girls as well, so good for them. Um, they're playing against uh, Donny Bells in the Women's Super League 2 Open. A tough game to start the season for them. Uh, that's at the Coach and Horses ground on Sunday. So get yourself up there because it's usually a really good turnout and good standard of football as well, I'm led to believe. Uh, Sheffield Eagles, they lost their season opener in the Championship to Oldham. Fortunate, of course, that we still have the Sheffield Eagles um, after sort of all the liquidation going on in uh, Rugby League at the moment. Uh, but they play against Toulouse at the Beaumont Stadium in Wakefield on Sunday. Day. Long way to travel, but I'm pretty sure it'd be well worth it, especially all those signings that they it, made. It's, in sca January. it's scandalous, really, that such a successful outfit that's part of Sheffield's sporting heritage has to go 25 miles is, to yeah. play home matches. Mm. And it reflects shockingly on the city, really. It does, I yeah. know that I can sit here and, it's, you know, that I perhaps haven't promoted them as much, mm. much as I should. And you could say that the media hasn't. But I think the media has tried. I think they tried I think to. Radio, newspapers have projected. So somewhere within Sheffield, within the council, some people need to hang I their think, head in shame. I mean, that yeah. this outfit has to go and play in West York. It's a whole, it's a whole What's sort going of on? program of its own, really. But I would yeah. say that it's you know, you, you sort of you Sheffield fans, you've got two massive football clubs, mm. and you're probably thinking, you know. It's, it's not rugby league country, is it? I know, you know, 40 miles no. further up the, up the M1, it is, it is. You know, you've got Wakefield and Huddersfield and Leeds Rhinos and the Bulls as well, obviously, who were liquidated. But is enough being done to help them? I, I just don't know. It just, uh, Probably not. We'll get Mark yeah. Aston in. We'll get yeah, we ought, we ought to. We'll, Mark's we'll get Mark Aston in. And, uh, I'm sure he'll have He's made some good signings as well, yeah. so it'll be interesting to see how they get on on Sunday. Uh, two big wins for the Steelers, though, uh, last week, and that's a club who does get a lot of uh, coverage from the media. Smash Fife, 6-1 uh, last night, away. Uh, they're away twice this weekend. They won 6-2 uh, last week over Coventry last weekend, um, on the road against Knotts on Saturday and Edinburgh on Sunday. So big weekend uh, for them. They're creeping up that table into all the knockout stages of all the 
Cups as well. So bodes well for the Steelers. Sheffield Sharks basketball, they've got 12 days off after beating Worcester last week. 79-77 uh, was the score. So sweet revenge for the team that knocked them out of the BBL uh, trophy just a few weeks ago. Uh, Jack Haslam of Sheffield, he's won a three-metre springboard gold in the National Diving Championships last week. He had a bit of an injury layoff over winter, I'm led to believe. So uh, good to see Jack back in action. And we'll finish with Rugby Union. Oh, uh, Tigers fans, a bit of an apology because I sort of had a bit of a giggle at them last week saying, oh, I wouldn't go and watch them. The 12, uh, 12 defeats on the bounce. Well, it was lucky 13 because they managed to beat uh, Wharfdale last week and they play against another promotion chasing team, Sedgley Park on Saturday it's away from home but I think probably go and watch that one instead of the Six Nations because England were rubbish last week yeah <laughs> just, a, just a narrow win when a landslide win was forecast yeah, exactly. by a lot of people so your apology may be accepted yeah, I'm exactly. not sure they're big guys as well so be careful yeah, what you no, I know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> James thanks very much no indeed worries. no worries um, talking about upcoming fixtures as we were just now Toddy I mean honestly after Peterborough away on Saturday which is difficult yeah. and then Bristol Rovers, Rovers on Tuesday these two home games could be defining you know home to Scunthorpe and home to Bolton you couldn't right it's First, oh, yeah. first v second, first v third. It's um, it could be defining. Um, but to say, we've got to be confident. We've got we've got great momentum. We've got a, a really balanced squad, uh, a talented squad. Certainly for this league. What would you uh, What would you take? What would you take in those two results? Four points. No, I'd take two wins. Two I wins. think we're going for two <laughs> wins. I really yeah. would. Yeah. I'd Ask set, a silly question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because no, it's a good question. We're, right. at, we're at home. Two big crowds expected, yeah. Yeah, 28, 30, you never know, yeah, yeah. Um, the expectation's there. I know what Chris will be thinking, he'll want oh, six I points, want two of course. Points, of course That's Stephen of intent. turn it on his head, they'd be happy with a point, wouldn't they? Yeah, the right, others, yeah. They, yeah. Both, they both come to Bramall Lane and, and think yeah. if, we get, if we can yeah. nick a point, yeah. you know, we're happy. That's so, the thing, you've got the home advantage, yeah. haven't you? So, I mean, we're, the, yeah. we're all right, we flip in January, we're the form team, um, we're the biggest team in this league, of course, in terms of resource and... Um, and I think we've got the, the, the most talented squad. I know that Chris has got massive respect for the quality of player Bolton have because a lot of those players were in the championship last season. That's I know right. they got relegated, yeah. but yeah. they've got some real quality there. Yeah. But to what extent have you been surprised at the way Scunthorpe under Graham Alexander have kept it going? Well, you know, all right, they've had a defeat or two lately, but yeah. they've kept it going, haven't they? It's down to these, it's, they're obviously ta a talented bunch. I, yeah. mean, I mean, Graham's done a brilliant job there, of course. Um, on... I suppose not the same level of resource that no. sales and Bolton would have in terms of crowd and, and, and investment potentially into that first team. So it just shows you with maybe a, a smaller squad what can be what can be achieved. So yeah. credit to credit to Scunny for for staying there and pushing us on the way. And I expect them to be very competitive to the end of the season. It's every week, also. isn't it? Every yeah. single Absolutely. week. You know, you yeah. think, oh, you know, you're looking at this. Yeah. You think they've got to lose yeah. some week. You know, they've got to slip up. And they don't. They don't. Yeah, well, I've got, I've got, see, I've got, oppo, I've got oppos in my, in my role all around, all around the country. And obviously, Scunny's Max is a great kid who does my job over yeah. there. Uh, we're, we're constantly bantering each other. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, they are punching, properly punching. Their way, aren't they? John, the return of Sam Hutchinson. Um, when I was watching Wednesday all at sea trying to defend a 1-0 lead at uh, Wigan, thinking they need to put their stamp of authority on this game and they're failing to do so, I was kept thinking about Sam Hutchinson because I'm convinced that if he'd have been on that field and had stayed on that field and not got a stupid red card, that he would have held that thing together there so he's back isn't he? he's available again yeah tomorrow yeah, yeah. he's um he's, he's come on leaps and bounds really in in midfield i, th I thought he'd he'd, he'd fit into the center half role um which he did at the start of the season and i thought he, that was that was him because I, I think he's comfortable he's really yeah. I, I actually he's getting less yellow cards yeah i actually think he could probably Just step up and, and play <laughs> play premier yeah. league at, at center half um I think he's good enough. I think he's quick. He reads the game, but um, but you know once he's gone into that midfield, he's 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 done really really well. Um, he's been more and, and he was effective missed. for Wednesday there. He I has, think. yeah, yeah, most definitely. Um, but going back to the Wigan, I think even though he would have been a great asset in the middle of the park and put that shield on the front two, I just think that we seem to get to the stage now where if we do go one goal up, it's as if. We just try and hang on to the till the one nil victory, and uh, you know, great. We've had twelve clean sheets, I think, this season, which yeah. is, you know, they're, they're going for a record. But you know, against the, against the lesser lesser teams like Wigan, yeah. no disrespect to them, we have managed to to hang on. But you know, against the better teams like your Brightons, 
Mm. Maybe, maybe yet, you can't hang on. Against the better teams, well, rather freakishly, Wensley lost that game at Brighton, mm. despite being the better team, I thought, from mm. what I watched on, on TV. And against the better teams, they have performed. Yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, I think they've done better than they, than they did last year. I think last year yeah. was... There was that record of the was it the top five yeah. or six? They didn't, yeah. you know, they didn't That's beat. Progress. But they relied heavily on then, yeah. obviously, turning over all the teams below them. And this season, it strikes me that the they've, they've actually competed well the against opposite, the, yeah. the bigger teams. Obviously, yeah. great win up at yeah. St James's, yeah. but then they've struggled. They, yeah, they struggled. But I think that to me highlights that <clears throat> when they want to raise the game I against the better teams, they have done. Yeah. And yet against the not not as good a teams or the teams around them. They've sort of maybe been a little bit complacent or, or not been at, at, at the races, not got that tempo. You know, Bristol, was it Bristol City at home early in the season? 1-3-2, was you it? Know, and, and, and the last 20 minutes, they suddenly, it was suddenly like, you know, they'd yeah. slipped into fourth gear and bang, and they went at it. And like you said, they turned the volume yeah, up, and, as and, you said in the first and, and all of a sudden, they look like they can give anybody a game, you know what I mean? And I just... I suppose we, we, we always we always want the best, don't we? But yeah. I'd love them to go out and start like that and, and go and go and you know smash somebody out, out make of the a park, really. Too, yeah. and, and, and and that that again would would give them confidence as a yeah. as a unit, yeah. as a squad, and you know that self belief. Well, I know that, it's a different level, but it's why Chelsea is at top of that Premier League. The mindset and the, the drive yeah. they have constantly, consistently. Yeah keeps them right at the very top. Oh, by the way, to one of the topics of the week, what do you to make of the uh, the touchline shenanigans at Huddersfield Leeds? Uh, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was it was very entertaining. It was wasn't very it? entertaining. Yeah. 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 I mean, we know we all sanctimonious about it, so we shouldn't be seeing that. But of course, it was part of the drama of the game, the late winner and you don't get an English coach going on the field though, do you, as David Wagner? No, did. not not like not that. Usually. I know Chris has had a few jaunts down the line and, and <laughs> as, as, as we yeah. scored, which is just passion and emotion. Yeah. The little bump, do you know what should have happened? They should have just left the managers to it. It would have ended just there and then. Yeah. The fact that all the players piled in just exacerbated the whole thing, didn't it? It um, certainly did. So a little bit of sort of argy-bargy between the two managers, I think it may have just ended there and, and maybe not forgotten yeah. about it, but you know, yeah. maybe got a slap <laughs> now. There were all there sorts of FA charges wasn't deliberately on. setting out to show disrespect. He was just completely ecstatic that his team... It's an emotional up. game, isn't it? You're yeah. allowed to show your emotion. All right, yeah. it's, Gary was talking about respect and, and, and humility, perhaps, but come on, it, yeah. you know, if it had been the shoe was on the other foot, you think Correct. he stood Correct. still? I don't know. Yeah. I think as well, you know, there's probably the bit of the element as well. It's not this case for Chris Wilde or, or Carlos, I don't think. I think genuinely they are passionate, but I think someone like David Bagnett, who's very cool, calculated, obviously works very hard at his game, he then wants to probably show the fans he has got that passionate side to him a bit as well. He's probably in the back of his mind thinking, you it's know, a I want to get down the line It's a, a derby bit. game, Correct, yeah. A last minute winner. Yeah. It's set up for, yeah. for a, a chase onto the pitch, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, it Sunday is. morning yeah, style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah. referee should have nipped it. Anyway. Mark Housey, quite a learned fella, former Premier League referee. Yeah. Quite rightly, I think, feels the referee should have singled that, gone over to, to him, let him off. And said, right, watch the rest of it from the stand. Sure. Because he shouldn't be coming on the field. Yeah. Well, Jake Wright, yes. before we run out of time. Yes. Uh, the Quiet Man, 16 appearances. And I think it was Kevin Gage. Kevin's going to be in next week, I think, here. Right. Pointed out on Twitter. Just check yeah, out, yeah. he says, yeah. what United's results have been when Just Jake Wright's been so He's team. becoming a bit of a statue. He he's, he's, yeah, yeah. he's carving out a bit of a niche yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. showing us up. He, he's, he's, he's got great experience. Um, I think a couple of Oxford fans were some Oxford saying, no, you, you're welcome to him. Well, I'm, I'm glad we've got him because, yeah. like I say, it's our, it was our first clean sheet and a wee while as well. Mm. So he reads the game brilliantly. Um, listen to the guys talk today. I, I saw them train today. He's got great voice, commanding. Um, so, yes, I'm hoping he stays fit and I'm sure he'll be one of the very first uh, names on the team sheet um, for the yeah. run and I hope that we can keep him uh, keep him. And fit and happy. Well, well, one thing that uh, Chris Wilder made a point of, and it, it wasn't in response to a question, it was it was following the, the game against Wimbledon, down on the touchline, he quoted a number of ex-players, I think your name may have cropped up, Men Badger, Ted Hemsley, Tony Curry, and he said, you know, what a wonderful feel had been created around the club at Bramall Lane by these ex-players willing the team and the club to do well. And he said, that's not the case everywhere, you know. There are ex-players at other clubs who want the team to do badly. And I said, why is that? So he said, well, it's to reflect better on them and yeah. their era. And there's yeah. none of that there. No. There, 
And you're part of that, that scene? Well, you know, I've, I've worked there for a long time. I've seen some, some um, managers come and go. Um, the fact that it's a, a friend out there, of course, I'm going to support him. Um, but it, it is, like I think he says, very inclusive. Um, we want the club to do well. The fact that your mate's out there leading the charge just gives you that extra emotion. I think he quoted as saying, as a fan, the highs are a wee bit higher and the lows are a wee bit lower. But at the same time, yeah. um, we're all in it together. And I think that's the, that epitomises the, the club yeah. as a whole. Uh, and, 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 and Tufty's leading the charge. So we're, uh, we're delighted it's your mate out there. But we're delighted that we're first. And hopefully we can, uh, we can achieve our, our aim that's been far but, too but long. There's none of the sniping that you can get. You know, you think of some cities and some clubs. I'd say Nottingham Forest is one that comes to my mind where You've got a, you know, you have had over the years, no names, no patrol, a few ex-players chipping away in the background. They've had a lot to chip away at, by sure, the way. Sure. They really have. Yeah. Um, have you noticed anything in that regard? Wednesday have got a lot of goodwill surrounding. You're a former yeah, Wednesday player. I think, I think, the um, I think the club players are a big part in it as well. You know, mm. the club club being wanting the ex-players to be inclusive and, and mm. you know, yeah. I know, I know United do a hell of a lot with that, mm. and I think it's something that Sheffield Wednesday are getting better at. Hmm. Um, I think that comes from new ownership and perhaps learning as you go along yeah. who these players, ex-players are, yeah. and what they meant to the to the yeah, club. Yeah, I think so. But I, you know, I, I do think that back in you know in years gone by, um, especially at Sheffield Wednesday, it, it very it was very much like you know, you, you know, we're, you're not needed anymore. Off you yeah. go. Um, and there's a lot of other clubs that, like Norwich, you know, I was at Norwich, and Norwich are very, uh, uh, again, a very inclusive club. Yeah. Um, and not that you want anything off them, but they invite you know, you back a bit you know early, every now and again they, they invite you back, or or you do something, or they ask you to do something, and you're, you're more than willing to help out. Your contributions recognised, yeah. right? You it's know so I mean? important and in creating the the right atmosphere. Yeah, I think so. Environment. I think yeah. so. You know, and and, and he, uh, oh, all boils down, I think, at the end of the day, to if you're a fan, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm a you know, Sheffield Wednesday fan. Yeah. I've been since since the first breath I took, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and that's the great thing about this city. There are an awful lot of ex-players of great stature who've, who've remained supporters. Either they've been supporters to start with, or they've become supporters through through moving here. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and so I'm sure they're all. You're, all, you're a father, your, your children, yeah. you know, more or less reflect yeah. your team, don't they? So, you know, my wee man's a, a, a bled through and through. Um, I'm sure your, your, your children are the same with, from, yeah. from a Wednesday point of view. So, it, it, like I say, it's, it's, it's about being inclusive. It's about having contributions recognised. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a brilliant city, let's be honest. Yeah. You know, I'm a Belfast boy and it's a brilliant, brilliant city. Yeah. I've been here 30 years. 30 years I think, this yeah. year. So I think what's amazing as well is the number of players who come to Sheffield and, and don't it's leave. And stay yeah. Right. yeah, correct. You yeah. Know, so there's loads, plenty on there. You know, yeah. you know, yeah. I, 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 again, Harry's it. era when a lot of the a lot of the Wimbledon lads. And Harry Bassett stayed for years after yeah, Sheffield yeah. United. Yeah, Gailey's still here. Johnny Ganton, yeah. Trace, all those boys are stayed. We've got a lot to be thankful for and a lot to look forward to and a lot of gratitude to these guys. Of course, the yeah, as always. Already. Very welcome. Thank you, James. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Pleasure. Thank Cheers, you to lads. John Newsom. Thank you. Uh, Kevin Gage and the chairman of Stocksbridge Park Steels is on next week. He's got loads of Jamie Vardy stories. Do rejoin us YouTube later. See you.